Uh, I'd love, now I'd like to call upon uh, Chelsea Thurlow to come and uh, speak with us. Uh, Chelsea was just 23 years old uh, when she went into cardiac arrest. She was rushed to St. Paul's Hospital and uh, required the insertion of a mechanical heart, that ventricular assist device that you saw in the first slides from uh, Dr. Andy. Um, these mechanical heart pumps, uh, as you heard, were pioneers by doctors at St. Paul's. And they're an example of the integration of care, research, and teaching, and how that leads to life-saving breakthroughs for patients such as uh, Chelsea. So thank you, Chelsea, for coming today to share your story. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to start by saying it is an absolute honor to be here today to celebrate life and to recognize the medical care I received at St. Paul's Hospital was none other than extraordinary. There was not a moment of doubt that they weren't doing everything in their powers to ensure the best outcome for me. Um, and they did not stop there as they were very compassionate on an emotional level towards my family, whom I can only imagine the emotions that played as all odds were against me. Many at St. Paul's have a very special place in my heart, and I consider them second family. But before my life came to a screeching halt, I was a young and healthy woman with no medical conditions other than a history of asthma. I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta, and the oldest of four siblings. I moved to BC when I was 16, and although my parents disapproved, I was not only determined, but stubborn. Um, I moved, or sorry. I just lost my train of thought. Um, I put myself through school and courses, and I followed my passion in the animal industry, working as a pet groomer and a vet assistant. I had also met a very special man in my life, which I married three months before I became very ill. I also followed my heart and became a mom and gave birth to a beautiful baby girl four and a half months before I became ill. Little did I know that she would play such a huge role in saving my life, as if it wasn't for her, I likely would have not have gone into emergency when I did. The events that took place October 21st, 2010 will always be a day to remember. At 23 years old, I would have never thought being so young and healthy that I would have to think about dying, let alone my heart stopping at any moment. A couple weeks leading up to that day, I thought I had a bad case of the flu. If I had only known my extreme exhaustion, body aches, sore throat, and lightheadedness were all signs of my body shutting down. But I made excuses for every symptom to avoid the emergency room. As I blamed exhaustion on being a new mom, my body aches due to a new mattress and a sore throat on the flu. I didn't listen to all the signs I was given to seek medical help except for one. It was not until I could not even pick up Chloe, my four and a half month old. Thanks, baby girl. It was this that made me go into the ER at 3.30 instead of waiting for an appointment I had made with the family doctor at 6 p.m. I went into cardiac arrest at 5 p.m. As my husband drove me to emergency, the only thought going through my mind was, I hope they have something to give me so I can be back to mommy. I remember looking at the back seat, Chloe fast asleep in our car seat, and both of us unaware of how close Chloe was about to come to not having a mom. Having gone into Richmond Hospital, where I there went into cardiac arrest in front of a cardiologist, Dr. Halogen and Dr. West were on the ball and knew of the LVAD at St. Paul's that could save my life. Also, the extensive efforts made that day from the triage nurse to the emergency team, EMS, surgeons, and cardiologists, who went above and beyond the call of duty as their skills were put to the test. Their efforts to save my life were none other than extraordinary. After 35 minutes of CPR, I was transferred from Richmond Hospital to St. Paul's Hospital. I was given advanced CPR with intubation and placed on life support. With that being said, you must understand I received a total of 100 minutes of CPR. And with extensive CPR comes great consequences, as with the lack of oxygen to the brain, 
permanent brain damage starts to occur within minutes. So it is a miracle within itself to be here today with no neurological damage. With kidney, liver and heart failure and punctured lungs, I was placed on life support. Dr. Chung had much difficulty placing the ECMO or the heart and lung machine in a major artery in my left groin as my arteries were so small. Eventually unable to place in my left leg, surgeons came out to tell my family they succeeded in placing life support in my right leg, but my left leg was likely to be amputated. But thanks to an amazing efforts of a vascular surgeon who spent seven hours repairing it, I have all my limbs today. Again, another miracle. Now being supported by machines and medications, everyone was hoping my heart would recover on its own, but it became apparent that it was not going to happen, in which case a device called the LVAD, or artificial heart pump, was going to be implanted in last efforts to save my life. On October 25th, 2010, Dr. Brasher and his amazing team spent over 10 hours operating on my heart and were able to implant the LVAD. There again was many complications and many heart surgeries before this was called a success. During surgery, I had excessive bleeding and several blood transfusions. I was taken back to the operating room several times following the implant of the LVAD due to complications. Because of all the access fluid in my body and swollen heart, my chest had to be reopened to relieve pressure. It stayed open for three days before Dr. Chung was able to close it up. Again, another miracle. In my case, the LVAD was supposed to be temporarily about a year until I could receive a heart transplant. With the LVAD being placed and overcoming countless com complications, they were able to wean me off anesthetic and take me off the ventilator. I awoke to find 11 days of my life went by and still a week before the LVAD, or sorry, still a week before I could understand the miracle that had just taken place and the fact that life was going to be different with the LVAD. I'd be lying if I said this was easy as I remember waking up, looking down, seeing the many staples closing my chest the incisions on my legs, and the many IV lines. I also had to understand with the amount of trauma to my body, I was weak and unable to care for myself. Simple things like showering, brushing my teeth, and walking was going to be a challenge. But it was at this time my mom surrendered her life, her wants, and her needs, and she became my rock. Thanks, Mom. Weighing in at 73 pounds, and almost no muscle mass, I had much to overcome yet. But finally, my stubbornness was about to pay off. As I was eager to be independent and be the mom I've always wanted to be. There was another special woman by the name of Jennifer Keeley, who is the LVAD coordinator through St. Paul's Hospital. She not only taught me and my family everything there is to know about the LVAD, as well as monitoring me, but she also became somewhat of a life coach as she truly cared on a personal level and was there every step of the way, a friend I needed during my time in need and her friendship extended to my family. With much work and surviving a medical miracle, again, I was blessed as my own heart recovered remarkably. I was able to get the LVAD explanted or removed after four and a half months. This was not only a miracle, but also very exciting for me as it meant my life was getting closer to normal. I was able to start weaning echocardiograms, which is a procedure where they turn down the pump slowly and with giving my own heart um, time to heal. Um, there is nothing about this story that is short of a miracle, as I was part of the 11% of VAD patients who have been explanted, as the remaining 89% have the LVAD for life or until heart transplant. Traditionally, the LVAD is explanted by reopening the chest bone, but a very skilled surgeon, Dr. Chung, had designed a new technique to unhook the pump from my heart. I was the fifth patient ever to be explanted this way. The disadvantages to this procedure, or sorry, the advantages to this procedure is that it is less invasive 
and recovery time is better. But this is a hard decision as it also has its disadvantages shall something go wrong. But with careful consideration and after a six hour explant surgery, it was a success. With having caught a virus called myocarditis and not only surviving, but being part of a miracle has changed my life in so many ways. Each and every day is a good day to be alive. Every memory is so much more profound as I fear if tomorrow will come. I am still being followed by cardiologists and monitored by St. Paul's Healthy Heart Clinic. With echocardiograms, heart medication, as well as keeping five days a week at the gym, followed by healthy eating habits. I will probably never run a marathon or go scuba diving, but I have the best gift in the world. To be here today as a mother, a wife, a daughter, a sister, and a friend, I truly could not ask for more. Although I have mentioned a few, it is impossible to thank everyone for their extraordinary efforts, and there just aren't words to describe the amount of gratefulness and gratitude I and my family have to all those that were a part of saving my life and getting me through recovery. I will never forget the amazing team at St. Paul's Hospital that refused to give up on me. I am standing here today because of you. You have heard me mention miracle several times as you need to know that I am here today because miracles do happen. Faith and the power of prayer have a greater magnitude than we know as there were prayer chains that reached across the world from people I may never meet, but I am very grateful the Lord heard our prayers. Thank you.